I'm going to try to solve a problem with an app today. Sometimes I feel bad and forget the great parts of my life. So let's build an app that allows you to input one awesome thing that happened to you each day. We're going to build this with Bubble without writing one line of code. The app is called Awesome Jar, and let's keep it real simple. I want the ability to write awesome things, and I want the ability to grab a random awesome thing that I wrote previously. And whenever I'm feeling down, I can open up the app and relive some of the awesomeness of my life. So here's my empty bubble app, and the first thing I need to think about is page structure. I want this app to work on mobile and desktop, so it has to be responsive. I'm going to use 960 page width. Uh, why? Because 320 is good for mobile, I find, and I want to break it into three columns. And 320 times 3 is 960, I believe. 1280 also works if you want four columns. Uh, the height, we'll leave at 740. It doesn't really matter at this point. We can adjust that as we go. Uh, I want my app to be centered. So I'm going to add a group and uh, throw it in the middle here. And we're going to make it 320. And uh, the full height. And we'll center that horizontally. We're going to make sure that we name everything. I forget to do this very often, but here we'll call this one group center. And we want this to be a uh, fixed width. And the reason for that is because... We want the center to remain at 320, and we want the left and right side uh, to shrink and expand as the page gets bigger or smaller. And one last thing I want to do here, just to get started, is to put a uh, enable element borders, just so we can see our, our group in there. Another thing I always try to do is add margins. Uh, 20 pixels is usually good enough, so we're going to do that on all sides. And we can do this by adding another group. We'll call that group margin. And we're going to put it in the middle with 20 pixels on each side. Uh, so 320 minus 20 minus 20 is 280. 740 minus 20 minus 20 700. And uh, x axis will be 20, y will be 20. And that should fit right in the middle there. 20 pixels on all sides. So I have some images that I already prepared that we're going to add in here. Uh, the first one is a logo. So I'm going to look at my elements here and grab an image element and throw that. And we're going to upload my logo, Awesome Jar. And um, we can make this a little smaller. 150, 75, I think is good. We'll throw it near the top and we'll center it. And if you're looking to build a logo, I just did this on Canva pretty easily. Canva.com, pretty cool design website. Uh, the next thing that I want to throw on here is a sticky, like a yellow sticky note. Uh, I just found an image, a free image somewhere. Uh, so we're going to throw that on here and adjust the size. This one is 250 by 250. And we'll center that as well. Move it up a touch, actually. And finally, I want to throw in one more. Um, this is going to be the jar. The jar in Awesome Jar. And 250 by 340 should be good. And uh, this will sit near the bottom here. We forgot to name our images. So let's do that. Image logo. Image sticky. Image jar. Jar. At this point, I think I can take these borders off. So um, the next thing I need is a text input. I want to put it right into the sticky here, so it kind of feels like you're writing on a sticky. Uh, Multi-line input is what I want. It's the element here, so I'm going to drag that on the screen. And we'll try to make it fit 
right in here. And we'll center that. And um just want to change uh the placeholder. See it says type here. What's one awesome thing that happened today? Mm, I can update that style. Do like a handwriting. Since it's like your handwriting on a sticky. Uh, a little bigger. A little more space. There we go. That looks good. And I want a button right underneath it. That'll be used to uh, submit it. We'll call it put in jar. So I'm um, right at the top here. Edit me. Put in jar. Uh, that green is kind of ugly. I already made a style here, button awesome. That is the name of my style. Put in jar. We're going to stick it right there. And we want one more. If I press control and then click on the button, it duplicates it. Ooh, see that? This one will be grab sticky. Grab a sticky from the jar. Grab a sticky, any sticky. That can be centered. All right, let's preview it. Um, looking pretty good. I got a text input to write my awesome thing. I have a button to submit it, but this button doesn't do anything yet. Um, first we need to build out our database and create a table where these awesome things can be stored and retrieved later. Uh, so let's head back. We're, we're going to go to the data section and Bubble has the user data type built in, but we need to add a new one. So new type, we're going to call it stickies create. And um, every time a sticky is submitted, it will live as a record in the sticky table. So there's a few fields added automatically. Creator, modified date. Uh, we need two extra fields or custom fields. One we'll call awesome note text and this is going to store what was written on the sticky and we need one more called we're going to call it unique id and i'll explain why we need that one in a sec but for now we're going to head back here and we have our button and we have our data type that we just set up uh, so now we can connect the two with a workflow. And this is where the magic happens in Bubble, really. Uh, so if I click on put in jar, say start edit workflow, this will bring me to the workflow tab. Um, when button put in jar is clicked, uh, we need to tell Bubble what to do when the user clicks put in jar. So I wanted to add a record to the um, stickies table. So I'm going to go to data things, create a new thing, type stickies, and we're going to update the awesome note field with the uh, multi-line input that we put on the screen there. And that is good for that. We need to do one more thing, which was actually reset inputs just to clear out that multi-line input when we're done or after we submit. Cool, uh, so let's work on the grab sticky workflow as well. Um, this one's a little more complicated. Here's what I wanted to do. I want to hide the text input. I want to hide the put in jar button. And then I want to retrieve a random sticky from the table and show it on the sticky image. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do here is we're gonna group together the text input and the button. I right click, I can say group elements in a group. And I want to name it. I'll call this um, 
group text input. Okay, so we've grouped our text text input and our put in jar button. Now I'm gonna go to my elements tree here and uh, here I can hide it because I wanna put a text date and a new sticky button on the screen here. Uh, that's gonna show when you click grab sticky. Okay, and then I want to group these three things together and hide it by default because it shouldn't show by default. The text input should show by default, but this is going to show when you click grab sticky. Uh, so select that, select that, select that, right click, group elements. We'll call this uh, group sticky text. And uh, this element is visible on page load. We're going to uncheck that. All right. So let's start on the grab sticky workflow. When button grab sticky is clicked, we're going to go to element actions and we're going to show one element, which was the sticky text group. And then element actions hide. We're going to hide another element, which was the group text input. Let's try it out. So if I click grab sticky, see it hides the text input and shows uh, the sticky note and the date and the new button. So how do we retrieve a random sticky? To do this, I'm going to use a plugin called Random Number. I already have it installed, but you can just click Install More and find it. It's free. Um, and now I can, if I drag this on the screen, I have an object that I could put here. I'll just maybe put it here for now. And this is going to generate a random number that I could use to grab a random sticky. So it wants to know. Um, between what two numbers should this random number be generated? And that's where we're going to use the unique ID because we're going to put a unique ID on every record that or sticky that gets put into the table uh, so we can find one. Uh, so we're going to, the minimum, we can do a search for stickies. Um, the first one uh, the first one's unique ID. So this is going to grab the first sticky's unique ID, and that's going to be the minimum value. And then we're also going to do the last items. Uh, so we'll do stickies again, last items, unique ID. Uh, so it's going to grab a random sticky between the first one and the last one. Now let's go back to our grab sticky workflow. Um, when I added that plugin, it also gave me a new action here for a regenerate a random random number. So every time you hit that button, we're gonna have to regenerate a number. So let's do this setup again. And so every time you click that button, it's going to regenerate a random number. Now We need to update our element here. Uh, so we need to tell Bubble what text do you want to display here. Well, it's going to be the awesome note uh, the where the unique ID equals a random number. Uh, so I'm going to do dynamic data. And we're going to do a search for a sticky. Uh, we can, we're going to add a new constraint here where the unique ID is equal to the random number, random numbers number. And we can just say get the first one because there should only be one. 
and we're going to show the awesome note. And let's do the same thing for the date, except we'll get the date instead. And since it's a date, if I click more again, I can format it. One more thing we need to do uh, to get this scrap sticky workflow working is we go back to our put in jar button. When we put a note into the jar, we need to make sure a unique ID is being generated for each of those awesome notes. So let's go back to the put in jar workflow and create new sticky. I want to set one more field and that's the unique ID. And what we're going to do here is do a search for stickies uh the last one and get its unique id and we're going to add one to that so every time we add a new one it's just going to add one so our stickies will have the ids of one two three four five six etc now let's see if this works What's one awesome thing that happened to you today? I went to the zoo and an elephant splash water on me. Put in jar. So that added a record to the stickies table. It cleared out my element here, my text input. Now I'm going to grab sticky and it picked it up i went to the zoo and an elephant splashed water on me now we only have one so it's it's only ever going to grab that one let's try one more oh we still need to work on our new sticky workflow let's do that first and then we're done i think um workflow so another way you can add workflows i'm just going to click here click here to add an event um elements an element is clicked yes uh the element is the sticky button new sticky button and we're gonna do the opposite of the grab sticky button we're gonna show the group sticky text no group text input we're gonna hide the other one I didn't name these very well. It's confusing. I group sticky text. Yes. Try that. Uh, what's another awesome thing that happened? I got my hair cut. Not really, because I haven't got my hair cut in months. Grab sticky. Got my hair cut. And this is date. I went to the zoo and oh, 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 there's only two in there. But as you add more day over day, then you can grab random ones and see the, the awesome things that uh, happen to you in your awesome life. Uh, so I think we're done. Of course, there's a lot more functionality that we can add to this, uh, but this should give you an idea of the power of bubble and how you can bring your own app ideas to life without code. Uh, so feel free to recreate this or steal this app idea if you wish. Do whatever you like with it. Um, I appreciate you watching though. If you like this video, please subscribe and tune into the next one. Also feel free to leave a comment with your questions or video requests. Thanks a lot again. Appreciate it. Uh, see you on the next one. Ciao.